in the presence of God. You are now showing that the house of God is a separate place, separated, separated. I can wear sandals here. But I can never wear them. If I want to become a Christian and worship this God, I must remove the separateness of blessings, separateness. So these are the processes the Lord was talking about that will distinguish the church from the rest of the world. But listen to this now. And so, what is the real mechanism that will make those people out now know that we are being visited? By the glory of the Godhead. Look, look at this now. When you remove those circles, because God has come to you. God is now dwelling with you. God is now walking among you. He is tabernacle in the house. Because in one of the dreams he wrote for me across the sky. After he came down, then a subsequent dream, he wrote for me capital letters in the sky, tabernacle, meaning I am now resident. I am now resident, I am officially moved in to prepare the church for the coming of the Messiah. But what he says is this, that when you have removed your sandals, then the following things about you must change, the physical evidence about your life, the following must change. Do you know sometimes I always think that Moses was, Moses was looking for some physical identity card or passport or something physical to show to go out there and say look show we have eaten God's manna look the cloud has walked with us he, I, I, I kind of have a feeling that he was looking for some kind of identity card and the Lord is saying but the identity card is this one here that when, that when you have now revered my presence and removed your sandals that have been trampling my worship place, you have removed them. Then number one, your talk must change. The things you say will have changed. Number two, those who are writing, your walk must change. Number three, your friends must change. In other words, your companions, they must also change. Number four, your dressing must change. Because right now in Finland, you see, the church is dressing like the world. But then, when sometimes you go to Kenya, and then you see, wow, their dressing has changed. So, so there is a change. They, when the other dressing was immoral, yeah. immorality, but then when you are visited now, you, now you have reverence for God. Now you see holy dressing, you see everything is pointed towards there. Yeah. And so you will find that 
the dressing that the world presents, you will not be interested anymore. Your favorite TV programs must change. Your eating must change. Eating. Your eating patterns. Your behavior of eating. Lifestyle of eating. All of a sudden, the people at your workplace. They say, let, let us go for lunch. And they say, no. Today is Friday. Every Friday I fast. Just a moment. They say, what is wrong with her? And this behavior she has just started recently after going to Kenya. Uh, no, no, I'm just saying, you know, that visitation is here also. <laughs> because this, 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 this behavior she has just started after visiting the conference. <laughs> and seeing the glory of God. And seeing the glory of God. Then, then all of a sudden she saying every Tuesday and Friday she fasts. Your drinking behavior must change. If you have been testing wine and alcohol like you see in the church in this country, then all of a sudden you don't want to go and meet your friends for wine and pizza. Every Friday you don't want to go. And you start telling them, you will start saying to them, Say to your friends that uh, you, you guys, you know, after all, wine is not good for you. After all, considering what alcohol has done to destroy young people, I don't want it anymore. Your, your story has changed. The way you look at wine. And you love wine in the evenings or Friday with your friends. All of a sudden it's as if you put on other lenses. Now you look at wine like the devil. The thing that your wine has changed. And you say that when you look at even your companions, the kind of friends you put around you, they have changed. Because there is one of the principles that I teach all over the world, from Australia, New Zealand, to Finland, here to Canada, to South Korea, there is one principle of kind I teach. That says, walk with people going in the same direction. So, so your friends will change. If there is a friend who is always calling you and you know that that man is sexually lasting at you. You just come down that phone. Because how does this help my eternity? Everything seems to be connected with eternity. And he says, if you look at your worship, it will change. Your praises have changed. The word, your word that you preach or share with your family has changed. When you encounter this law, when you meet the Father, when you meet the Father, the word that you preach, when you like preaching, oh, God is love. Don't worry. There is so much grace. This is 2015. We are in the modern age. We are not legalistic. That is the Old Testament. We are in the New Testament. You know, whatever you preach before. That don't worry. 
We are in the dispensation of the grace. Don't worry, there is so much love. Don't worry, we are a modern generation. Don't worry, God understands. He knows we are not Jesus. He understands. Those things you used to preach will change. All of a sudden you start preaching to your family and your church and your friends. Be careful. God is holy. Be careful. The Messiah is coming. Be careful that you don't miss heaven. And when people will look at you, I am now answering Moses. I am answering you. How will people know that we, we this generation, have been visited? And you say that when people will look at your salvation, they find that your salvation has also changed. And finally, when they look at your destiny, they find that when you were walking in this direction of sin, your destination has now changed. You're walking in the other direction. Even your destiny has changed. And when people, and when people see that these changes have taken place in you, when people see that these changes have taken place in you, including your destiny has changed, then they will know that this church, these people, they have indeed been visited. That is the answer that the Lord gave to Moses. Because he was saying the following. Those who are right, you will say the following. That whenever the Lord visits a place, he brings his divine presence to that place. In other words, number two, he was saying, number two now. Number one, divine presence. And number two, when the divine presence of God the Father visits a place, then he sanctifies that place. And bring it that fire. Number three, when that place has been sanctified, sanctified, then he consecrates that place. Consecrate. Number four. After he has consecrated that place, then he declares that place holy ground. Even now he has visited the house. In other words, the Lord is announcing very loud to the four winds of the earth that behold, the house of the Lord has now become holy ground. So number four is holy ground. He announces, he declares holy ground. Number five, uh, yeah, uh, number of days. the people who are found in that place of visitation, they are given a holy assignment, holy duty. Uh, 
And what is the holy duty? To observe a holy worship of the Lord. That is the removal of Sandros. Holy worship of the Lord. And when they observe the holy worship, is it number six or seven? We are moving, we are going to six. We are going to seven, right? Very good. Number seven. Say it, man. Once, once they have taken up the holy duty of holy worshiping of Jehovah, then now you hear the Lord said before you. Once they, once they start to worship holy now, holy, holy worship, holy worship, then you hear the Lord now saying before you. That even though the whole earth is mine, yeah. okay. even though I have created all the nations, for me, you will be to me my treasure possession. Now he begins to separate you out as a treasure possession. That is number seven or whatever. Yeah, then, uh, say it's in spot, uh, treasure possession. Those who yeah. only worship now become the treasure elect, the elect of God. That is what the glory has come to be in the church. <laughs> so, so that is what the glory of God, the Father, has come to do in the church. And now listen to this now. Once, me, once you are now a treasure possession, then listen to the next number. Then from that point on, from that, yes, from that point, thank you, thank you so much. From that point on, you are God's elect. Yeah, thank you so much. I want, I, want the trans, I want the translation to flow because I'm entering the message. So that I don't, you know, sometimes I spend more time and I lose myself in the process. But it's well now because we are live on TV. So now, uh, listen, precious people. Thank you very much. And until I do this, take it, take it on until. Okay, she'll take it very good. And until I take, take the microphone, please. Okay, give it to her. Thank you very much. That's why every country I go to, they choose the best translator in the country and they give to me. So that I can flow, yes. Every country. Even Brazil, they're prepared already. Because of the time, I have a short time to deliver this and go. Now, listen to this now. So, I have just described to you. Okay, Anna, can you take the microphone and translate me, please? Stop pulling around. And keep the waters away from you. Keep the water totally from you. Anna, take, Anna, take the microphone. Please don't mind. We are live on TV now. Can you try to translate the message of God? Thank you very much. So, I have just described to you how the Lord has come in his cloud of glory to distinguish his people from the rest of the world. In other words, the Lord is saying that this is the hour of visitation in the church. And this visitation has real effect in the church. It must have evidence in your life. And so I want to look at the book of Isaiah chapter 26. And then I will move into the next segment. You see that in Isaiah chapter 26 verses 19 to 21. Not only does Isaiah talk about this visitation, but Isaiah also shares on the role of the visitation. 
Mutta Jesaja myös jakaa tämän vierailun roolin. In that scripture you see the sculpture, the role of the visitation sculpture in there. Ja tämä vierailun rooli on sitten puhutaan, tässä vierailun roolissa puhutaan siellä. Isaiah 19. Isaiah 26, verses 19 on. Can I read it now? Thank you. He says, but your dead will live. Okay. But your dead will live. Their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Mutta sinun kuolleesi virkoavat eloon. Minun ruumiini nousivat ylös. Herätkää ja riemuitkaa te, jotka tomussa lepäätte. Sillä sinun kasteesi on vankeuksien kaste ja maatua vainajat ilmoille. Just from that one verse alone. You see so many things about this visitation. But when Isaiah saw this dispensation, this visitation, in the manner in which Isaiah described the narrative of this visitation, you can clearly see that Isaiah had not just seen one dispensation. You can see that actually Isaiah had seen a dispensation of closed heaven. In other words, of drought. And then Isaiah now sees the dispensation of open heaven. Because it, it, where he's coming from, it seems as if he has seen a people in proud waiting to be visited. Desperately waiting for visitation. But when the visitation comes, he announces to them. He said, hey, hey, now shout, stand up and shout for joy, because your visitation has now come. That means he saw the different, the, the two different seasons. But even more importantly is that he sees the power of that visitation. And he describes that visitation, the nature, as the morning dew. The dew of the morning. And he said, that is the morning dew. And we know in that description we get a lot of message because the morning dew is always short to live. That means Isaiah was saying, be careful when that visitation comes. It is short lived, it will last for a short time. And Isaiah also talks about the power of that visitation. He said, Look, your dead will now live because of that visitation. So, so very good. So Isaiah, Isaiah sees so much about that visitation, including the season and the nature of visitation. And the purpose. Verse 20 is the purpose. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut the door behind you for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his way to punish the peoples of the earth. The earth, I mean, to punish the peoples of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the bloodshed upon her. She will conceive her slain no longer. Sillä katso, Herra lähtee asun sijastaan, kostamaan maan asukkaille heidän pahat tekonsa, ja maa paljastaa verivalkansa eikä surmattujansa enää peitä. And you see that what Isaiah is essentially bringing out ja näet, että Jesaja itse asiassa tuo ilmi is the role of this visitation. Se on tämän vierailun uh, niin rooli. He essentially sees the church 
in verse 20 entering into heaven. Hän itse asiassa näkee jälkeensä 20 seurakunnan pääsevän sisälle taivaaseen. Go my people, a special group called my people. Mene, a special the elect, the special elect which we are going to handle today here. Mene. A special group he calls my people. Hän kutsuu tätä spesiaali ryhmänsä minun kansakseni, menkää minun kansani. He sees them entering. Hän näkee heidän menevän sisälle. Some rooms. But when you go to John chapter 14 verses 1 to verse 3, then you hear Jesus say that he's going to the Father's house to prepare those rooms. And he says in my Father's house there are many rooms. And now you see Isaiah see the entry and the shame. Isaiah sees so much. Isaiah sees the, even the shutting of the door. That as this glory comes, it also essentially becomes an announcement that the door will soon shut. The door will shut. So if there is any important message to be from there, it is number one, my people. Who are these that the Lord calls his people? What are their features? What are their identities? What are their characteristics? So that I can raise those characteristics and compare myself with them. Do I look like God's people, my people? And if I don't look like that, then I can do work before it's too late. That's one of the main things I want to look at today. But you see, Isaiah also talks about the samples, the samples. He said, where blood has been poured, it will now be exposed. The earth cannot conceal her slain any longer. Meaning that every wickedness will now be exposed by this anointing. This anointing essentially comes to expose sin. And that's why when I come to you, I am always called sin, sin. <laughs> I don't paint it white. No. If homosexuality is sin, I always tell you, be careful, that is sin. You will not enter if you are homosexual. Repent. I always say it. When I say so, then I love the church. That is love. But if somebody comes and lies to you, that is not love. Hallelujah. I always tell you, if lies is sin, lying is sin. All sin are the same before God. There is no greater sin. Lying is sin. False prophecy is sin. Sexual dressing immoral is the same sin as every other sin. Lasting at a woman or a man is the same sin as homosexuality. Same sin, sexual sin. The earth cannot conceal her slain any longer. She cannot hide the bloodshed on her anymore. Because God is in the house. And he is 
this morning. Every sinner to put aside. And now come to the Holy Spirit, the role of the Holy Spirit, right? So I wanted to mention that as a gateway for me to get the message of this day. Even the many people watching, and we yesterday we understood a lot of people were watching globally on uh, on, 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 on TV7. But listen to this now. I then now want to transition very slowly and quietly to what Jesus said about the midnight hour. I said that when the Lord lowered the golden clock in this cloud, the other vision I described yesterday, I say that was essentially God announcing, be careful, the midnight hour is coming. I said it. That was God essentially saying. That tell them. That when I come to deliver them. It will be at the midnight hour. He said that same thing to Moses. He told them to go to heaven. In the vision I described yesterday when it was at the midnight struck and became a writing in the sky. And that's why before I came I sent a title to you. I said the message I'm going to give is going to be the midnight hour. And I said how to prepare for the midnight hour. And so today I want to look at what the Lord Jesus himself said about the midnight hour. So listen to this now. If God the Father has now come into the house and brought the anointing for this hour into the house and from there he is redirecting the church back to the land, the perfect Passover lamb of God. And yesterday we saw that the blood is that announcement of how to prepare for midnight. Now, what did Jesus say about the midnight hour? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us read the book of Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 to 13. And you are going to discover that is a very, very deep revelation to the church. Mark, thank you very much. I did not know that you, 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 you translated messages on the radio, so you are really the strong translator. <laughs> but it's okay when you're tired we can share you can share with the, my son the name Miko yes thank you so much thank you Matthew 25 gracious people those of you who are following me now this is critical extremely also because he's saying, and make sure you get this, because sometimes out there you cannot get this. Yeah, All the time you cannot get this. I'm reading now Matthew 25, 1, 2, 13. He said the parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Verse 2. Before we go, can, can we read all and then I will explain all together? Very good. Verse 2 he says, 
five of them were foolish and five were wise. Ja kaksi sano, mutta viisi heistä oli tyhmä ja viisi ymmärtäväistä. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. Tyhmät ottivat lampunsa, mutta eivät ottaneet öljyä mukaansa. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. Mutta ymmärtäväiset ottivat öljyä astioihinsa ilma lampunsa. The bridegroom was long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell. Se tuli heille kaikille uniin, ja he nukkuivat. At midnight, the cry rang out. some of your oil our lamps are going out ja tyhmät sanoivat ymmärtäväisille antakaa meille öljyämme sillä meidän lampumme saapuvat no they reply there may not be enough for both us and you instead go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves mutta ymmärtäväiset vastasivat ja sanoivat emme voi se ei riitä meille ja teille menkää ennen niin myyjä ei luo ostamaan itsellenne But while they were on their way, can you reduce the keyboard a little bit? But thank you, you can stop it, just stop it. Thank you, sir. That's very good. He says, but verse, verse 10, but while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. Mutta heidän lähdettyön ostama ylkä tuli. Who were ready? went in with him to the wedding banquet. Ja ne, jotka olivat valmiit, menivät hänen kanssaan häihin. And the door was shut. I do not know you. Ja sanoi, totisesti minä sanon teille, että minä en tunne teitä. Vasta teet. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Ja kolmetoista. Valvokaa siis, sillä ette tiedä päivää, ettekä hetkiä. I want to walk with you very slowly, that you may understand this. This is very complicated part of the way. Haluan kävellä teidän kanssanne hyvin rauhallisesti, jotta ymmärrätte tämän. Tämä on hyvin vaikea vertauskuva. We saw yesterday when the Lord sent Moses to talk about the midnight hour. Me näimme eilen kun Herra lähetti Mooseksen keskustelemaan tästä keskiyön hetkestä. And now we are seeing the Lord Jesus Himself now speaking about the midnight hour. Ja nyt näemme kuinka Jeesus itse puhuu tästä keskiyön hetkestä. But there is a lot of deep knowledge and revelation that is embedded there for this visitation in this room. Mutta tässä kirkkojen pilvessä on paljon ilmestystä. Because the first thing you see here is the following. You see, let let me focus on me before I can. I know you want to read, but focus on me a moment so I can give you the open the open. This is amazing to me. Because the God of heaven, the most loved one, the most high. Se kaikista ylevin, se kaikista korkein. And you can imagine the upper chambers of the wisdom of God in heaven. Ja voit ymmärtää, että nämä Jumalan yläkammioiden viisauden huoneet. Sometimes he just releases a little knowledge to mankind and you find a cure for what? You find a cure. Just a little bit sometimes. He releases a little bit. So you can imagine the wealth, the, the endowment of wisdom and wealth of knowledge in the upper chambers of God the most high. Ja joskus hän vapauttaa tätä viisautta hieman maailmaan, mutta voit kuuta kuvita, kuinka valtavasti siellä on pakattuna siellä Jumalan yläkammioissa tätä viisautta ja ymmärrystä. Se on valtavasti pakattuna. And God Almighty wanted to find a way of communicating with mankind. Ja Isä Jumala halusi löytää tien kommunikoitiin ihmiskunnan kanssa. Regarding the treasures. He wanted to communicate with mankind regarding some hidden truths, what sometimes I call esoteric truth, deeper truths about number one, the salvation of the cross. 
liittyen numero yksi riskin pelastukseen. Number two. Numero kaksi. About the glorious kingdom of heaven. Liittyen Jumalan kirkkaaseen valtakuntaan. And before we start anything. Ja ennen kuin aloitamme mitään. I want you and I to appreciate the following. Haluan sinun ja minun kunnioittamaan seuraavaa. That God saw that our understanding capacity was narrow. Että Jumala näki, että meidän ymmärtämisen kapasiteetti on hyvin kapea. He saw our childishness in understanding his glory and kingdom. Hän näki meidän lapsellisuuden, lapsen kenkiemme ymmärtämisen siinä hänen kirkkaudessaan ja hänen valtakuntansa asioissa. Our slowness in understanding the faith and the mysteries of heaven. Meidän hitautemme ja vajavaisuutemme ymmärtäessämme can essentially bow down heaven on his knees in order to meet men in man's place down there and talk to man about the kingdom in man's tongues there ja hän puhuu ihmiskunnan kanssa niin ihmis, ihmisen kielellä Jumalan valtakunnasta. He realized hän ymmärsi, that if he spoken to us as God from his wisdom, we would not have understood the truths about the salvation of the cross and also the kingdom of God. Että me emme olisi ymmärtäneet Jumalan kieli, valtakunnan totuutta, eikä se Jumalan valtakuntaa, jos hän... Uh, It's very simple. I just said the truth about the salvation of the cross and the truth about the kingdom. So we, we, we cannot communicate. Then he decided to come down and bow down the entire of the heaven on his knees. To reach us in that low place of understanding. How did he do that? He did that by looking at the Jewish life. He saw that the Jewish people, his people Israel, They used to prepare for weddings. This is a parable of the wedding. This is not a wedding. But he saw that they used to prepare for weddings in their lives. And he found out that when they prepared for weddings, during the weddings and during that time the weddings took like seven days or so, That was the most joyous time in the Jewish life. He saw the way they were eating and greeting each other and happy for seven days, changing clothes today and then tomorrow another cloth, eating another meal, just happy. That was the happiest time in Israel. Tämä on Israelin kaikista iloisinta aikaa, he vaihtoivat vaatteita ja söivät ja olivat iloisia siellä. It is amazing that the Lord can take condescendence, he can take abuse. Voi olla no ihmeellistä, että Herra voi ottaa tämmöisen hyväksikäytön. On his wisdom. To lower himself so long to talk to us in our tongues, our life, the things we do. With the hope that we may understand the truths and mysteries of the salvation of the cross. And then also the mysteries of the kingdom of God. With the hope that it will draw us to like the kingdom of God. Can I move on now? So he found out that during weddings they were the most happiest. They liked that time. They came from far away with different clothes for different days, different foods. It was the happiest time in their lives. Then he decided to talk to them about the kingdom of heaven in relation in those times. 
Ja sitten hän päätti puhua heille Jumalan valtakuntaa näillä termeillä. And then he told them, ja hän kertoi heille, that look, että katso, just like the weddings when you are the most happiest. Eli siellä häissä, kun olet kaikista iloisimmillasi. Just like the weddings you enjoy so much, you are always the happiest. He saw they were so happy for days there. Hän näki, että he olivat niin iloisia, että joka monta päivää näissä häissä siellä. So will be the kingdom of God. Most happy, but eternal. Ja näin tulee olemaan myös Jumalan valtakunta, kaikista iloisilta in other ja ikuisesti. In other words, he was saying, ja toisin sanoen hän sanoi, Because the weddings were kind of celebration and the most joyous time. Koska nämä hait ovat kaikista iloisinta juhla-aikaa. In other words, thank you for sitting down and not moving anymore. Thank you very much for sitting and not moving anymore. Otherwise, you sit at the end because of time. You understand? I don't want to distract people here. Listen to me, precious people. Kuunnelkaa minua kallisarvoiset ihmiset. He is saying, Hän sanoo, that because they were happiest he was, he was iloisimpia, during the wedding, he had to come and talk to them in terms of that. He said, no, because you are always observing the most joyous time of celebration, then the Because weddings were celebrations. And so that is reason enough for you people here in Finland to begin to want to know about the kingdom, to want to enter. But I want to begin from what Matthew says. Matthew, because this part is only in Matthew. Because Matthew says, in this scripture, the, the Holy Spirit in Matthew says that the kingdom of heaven. Will be like. The kingdom of heaven says. And he uses that to actually portray, to actually refer to the kingdom of God. So you see the way he's addressing the kingdom of God, he addresses it as the kingdom of heaven. And there is so much information there for the church, right there. That when Jesus spoke about the Nineveh, the Holy Spirit presented the kingdom of heaven for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven for the kingdom of God. In other words, he was telling us that look, all the heavens belong to the Lord. He was using this to portray the unchallengeable sovereignty of God over the heavens. So these are some of the small things I don't want you to miss in this journey of moving to talk about the role of the Holy Spirit that Jesus brought to us about the Midnight Tower. Eli tämä on tosiaan pieniä asioita, mitä en halua tehdä missaavan liittyen tähän keskiöön hetkeen. Because eventually you find you understand that what is going to be centralized here is the anointing that his visitation brings in the role of the Holy Spirit to prepare for the midnight hour. Yesterday we talked about the blood. Now I am of the Holy Spirit today. Okay, don't worry, just say that. No, no, excuse me, can you translate me and then say it as you say, okay? Thank you very much for serving the Lord. Please we like. Thank you. He's talking about the role of the Holy Spirit. He, yesterday I talked about the role of the blood. And so now, today we're going to focus on the Holy Spirit. And so, li listen precious people. He's raising the kingdom of heaven to imply the coming of the rule of God. The coming of the rule of God. The rule of God. The reign of God. I thank God everybody understands English here, right? So he's talking about the coming of the rule of God, the reign of God. And so, 
there is so much I want to share here to this church because I'm living and I'm going to another country. Hallelujah. But focus on me, so I'll describe it to you in an easier term. The Lord Jesus was involved in an extended summer, a long summer. And that summer was stretching from Matthew 24 all the way to Matthew 25. And the title of that summer was The Coming of the End of the Age. The coming, the coming of the end of the age when finally the seventh trumpet will be blown. Prophetic timeline was the end, the end judgment. But what amazes me is that when he was involved in that long sermon about how the earth is going to mature to the final judgment. Then in the middle he interrupted it with this. He interrupted it with the message of the midnight hour. And that is so powerful because it speaks so much to us. In other words, it was saying that the earth is going to mature to the final judgment. He was saying the earth is going to slide down to the final judgment. But he interrupted it. And he inserted this parable here. Let me explain to you what that meant. The message that when Jesus talked about the midnight hour, the message he portrayed, he dispensed to the church. Look at this now. Two towers he raised. Two things. He One, the judgment. He's talking about the final judgment. But in the middle, he cuts the timeline. With the midnight hour, prepare. So the message that the Lord presents when he talks about the midnight hour is two. The final judgment and preparedness. Either of the two. Either you slide into the final judgment or prepare as deliverance. And you are delivered from it. Are we together? Very simple. I know the translation is now picking up well again, right? This is very, very simple. You must catch this. The message the Lord is giving the church now when he talks about the midnight hour, when the glory raised and lowered the midnight clock. Eli tämä on sitä sanomasta keskiön hetkeen liittyen, jolloin Jumala laski tämän, laski tämän keskiön kellon. Jesus himself talked about the midnight hour. Jesus itse puhui keskiön hetkestä. That they will be the sliding to the final judgment. Että siinä mennään kohti uh, viimeistä tuomiota. But those that will prepare in between there. Mutta ne, jotka valmistautuvat siinä, siinä, siinä välimaastossa. They will see the deliverance of the Lord. He tulevat näkemään Herran vapautuksen. Are we together on that? Olemmeko yhdessä tässä? Can I move to the next thing now? Voinko mennä seuraavaan asiaan tässä? And, and so this parable is very powerful because if I describe it to you in a nutshell. Joten tämä vertauskuva on hyvin voimallinen, jos laitan tämän teille pähkinän kuoreen. Regarding this visitation. Liittyen tähän vierailuun. Then what do you see? Niin mitä sinä näet? You see. That in this parable, everybody focus for a moment. This is important. Just focus on it. He says, in this parable, he is talking about two congregations. Two congregations that will appear in the church in one church. One of them is the righteous congregation. 
toinen sillä osa joukosta on vanhurskaus, vanhurskaus joukko. And the other is the unrighteous congregation. Ja toinen sillä seurakunnan siellä olevasta joukosta on se epävanhurskaus uh, joukko. And they will both be in one church. Ja he kummat, he kummatkin joukot tulevat olemaan yhdessä seurakunnassa. The church of this hour. Tämän hetken seurakunnan sisällä. But now look at this now. Mutta katsohan tätä nyt. The most important part is this. Kaikissa tärkein asia on tämä. Jesus, who preached so much love, love, love your neighbor, love do to others the way you want them to do to you. The Lord Jesus, who preached so much love, when it comes to the message of the midnight hour, then the Lord stands here and he commands that church, that generation to have two churches. I hope you know how the Lord operates, even how he operates with his prophets also. How the Lord himself operates. And how he also operates with his prophets. He causes you to command it to be. To command it to be. You say it and it is going to be. He goes, the, this, the one who stands before you here has stopped to oceans and oceans have listened and come out. Hallelujah. That's how the Lord operates. He was talking about what will happen now. He was commanding it. No? The Jesus who preached so much love. All of a sudden. Now he talks about two congregations. For the midnight hour. And everybody look at this now. And he says. That there will be one group. Who will be advantaged. Eli tulee olemaan toinen ryhmä, joka tulee olemaan Will of the advantage of prepared, prepared joka tulee olemaan valmistautunut. When they are advantaged, they, they, they are privileged. He, he on tämän etuoikeus. And then there will be another underprivileged group. Ja sitten tulee olemaan Not privileged. toinen ryhmä, jolla ei ole ollut tätä etuoikeutta. A disadvantaged group. He on tämän epäonninen ryhmä. Follow me on this, this is key if you can. The same Jesus that preached love, love, love. Now he tells us that the group which is privileged, advantaged, that the other group which is disadvantaged will come to them at the most desperate moment. Most desperate. And cry to them. Please. Please help us with some oil. You see, I will not the most critical moment, the most critical. Please help us. But the advantage group will be filled to help them. If you cut this message, then you will enter. This is very powerful. Listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. He says that there will be one group that is advantaged with the oil. And when the other group comes to beg, this group is not too keen to help the, the destitute, the disadvantaged, the poor. So, so when you look at Amen. So when you look at it, when you look at it, it seems as if is this selfishness or what? You, you might think that when Jesus was giving the message of the midnight hour, he was exalting selfishness. It was not selfishness. Why? Because he was simply saying that it comes to the issue of preparedness. 
niin valmistautumisessa. When it comes to the issue of entry into the kingdom of God. Mikä tulee tähän asiaan, pääset, niin kuin, että pääsee sisälle Jumalan valtakuntaan. Everybody has been given sufficient time. Niin kaikille on annettu riittävästi aikaa. And failure to prepare at that moment. Ja se epäonnistut valmistautumaan hetkiä varten. Is inexcusable. Niin sitä ei voi antaa anteeksi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tämä on varoitus seurakunnalle. Now you begin to understand what Jesus said about the midnight hour. Nyt alat ymmärtämään mitä Jeesus sanoi keskiyön hetkestä. Because the Lord Jesus, koska Herra Jeesus, He says, hän sanoi, not only with these ones who are advantaged and privileged to have oil refuse to help the poor ones. Että ei ainoastaan nämä onnekkaat, joilla on öl, öljyä, niin kuin sanoo, että, ei, ei halua, että, että he eivät halua auttaa näitä köyhiä. But also when those ones who are disadvantaged come back and knock on the door. Lord, Lord, please open for us. Mutta nuo uh, epäonniset, kun tulevat ja kokuttavat ole, ja sanoo, Herra, Herra, auta meitä. Jesus himself would say, I don't know. Niin Jeesus itse sanoo, en tunne teitä. And shut the door. Ja sulkee oven heille edestään. So because I know it's that you preach so much about love, God is love, Jesus is love. Ah, Jesus, I love him. I just speak to him when I want any time. I love him so much, whatever. But now, this face of Jesus is different. Eli suorassa puhutaan niin paljon rakkaudesta. Ei ole se vaan rakkaus, rakkaus, vaan rakkauden asiasta. Mutta tämä on, tämä on nyt sitten... That is, the, that is the one I bring to you. That is the one I bring to you. Tämä on se, joka tuo teille. Erilaisen kuvan Jeesuksesta. This face of Jesus is the one I bring to you. Meaning, sometimes when now it comes to the issues of entering the kingdom of God, Jesus is able to take the hammer, the hammer, and pass the judgment. Wow. Wow. How can you come from modern nation like Finland and Ziki and tell her about justice by Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. So listen to this now. We see a very important revelation here. When Jesus talked about the midnight hour, and I want to begin with the most important message in that parable. Remember that the virgins here, there is a reason he uses the term virgin, I want to explain to you. But remember the virgins here, they are bridesmaids. They are bridesmaids, they are not the bride. In this parable. Because in the Jewish wedding, always at the wedding ceremony, at one point the bridegroom goes back to his place. And then he always came back in the evening for the wedding dinner, wedding reception. Then he always came back in the evening for the wedding reception. So you can see now the imagery that the, 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 the wedding ceremony, the, the ceremony had taken place, but now the banquet, the dinner, that's why the Bible said the wedding feast was to take place. It's normally in the evening because the bride normal the bridegroom normally goes back and changes the dressing and then comes. And so normally the bridesmaids wait for the bridegroom as he's coming to usher him in, to receive him and bring him into the wedding banquet. It's very simple, just from your mind. From, from, from your mind you can understand. What I'm saying is very simple, from your mind. He's saying that after the wedding ceremony, then the bridegroom normally comes back in the evening, and the bridesmaids receive him and bring him into the feast. It's very, very simple. Hallelujah. So no, normally they, they prepare to receive him in the evening. 
vastaanottamaan hänet tilalla. But look at this now. Mutta katsotaan tätä nyt. In this parable, tässä vertauskuvassa, Jesus says that the bridegroom delays to come back. Jeesus sanoo, että tämä suurhanen uh, viipyy. He is delaying to come back. Hän viivyttelee tulla takaisin. And so I'm going to explain to you the importance of this. Joten nyt kuvailen tämän asian tärkeyden teille. Because it lays weight on the waiting process. Koska tämä, tämä antaa niin kuin painoa tähän, painoa arvoa tälle odottamiseen. And it teaches the church on how to be prepared and live your life prepared until he comes. Ja se opettaa seurakunnalle kuinka valmistautua ja elää niin kuin valmistautuneena kunnes hän tulee takaisin. And the lamps they have here. Ja ne lamput joilla he, jotka heillä on mukana. These lamps were torches. They are the same type of torches that were used to come and arrest Jesus. Remember they came with torches. But in showing the way. They were like torches. So when you were waiting for the bridegroom to come back in the evening, and you are holding your lamps with oil, with torches, burning, showing lights. Those who did not have lamps burning. Mutta he, joilla ei ollut lampuja palaisi palamassa, they were always considered to be thugs, robbers. Heitä aina pidettiin varkaina. Because they were robbers that attacked people on the highways, on the, on the, when the road entered the forest. These robbers attacked people. It's ollut, good for me to bring you Jewish light so you understand what Jesus was talking about. Ei ole Absolutely. Ei roistoja tiellä, jotka varastelivat ja ryökästivät ihmisiä. So if you, when they were waiting, the, 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 the bridesmaids were waiting with their lamps burning to receive the bridegroom like this. Eli kun nämä morsiusneidot odottivat ylkää vastaanottaen ylkäänsä tällä tavoin. Anyone that was not having a lamp burning, they, they only put these are thugs, who are these people? You, you know that kind of situation in the darkness. So you understand the church, those of you who are in the spirit, you understand what the Lord is saying to the church. And if you have your lamp burning, so we need, if it will not be burning, you know your designation. Hallelujah. Oh yes, this is very powerful message here. Now listen to this now. He say in, in simple terms. The Lord is talking about a very important message on preparedness. And I want to go step by step with you. Because he's saying, everyone now focus. He's saying, the wise virgins should not share the oil with the foolish. He does not allow them. Even him, when they come to the Lord, he tells them, to tell you the truth, I don't know you. He rejects them. What is the message to the church? In Slovenia. And in Helsinki. And everywhere in Europe. Listen to this. It is a rebuke to the church. That is a serious rebuke to the church in Finland. Because the Lord is saying that the wise virgins cannot mix with the foolish ones at the hour of entering. Eli viisaat neitsyöt eivät voi sekoittua tyhmien neitsyöiden kanssa tässä hetkessä, sisäänpääsyn hetkessä. In fact, Itse asiassa, if you listen very carefully to that parable, jos kuuntelet hyvin tarkkaan tätä vertauskuvaa, it's as though the Lord is saying, if the wise virgins had made the great mistake of sharing some of their oil, they would have failed to enter. Jos nämä viisaat neitsyöt olisivat tehneet väärin ja jakaneet öljyänsä, niin silloin he pääsivät, silloin he eivät pääse sisälle. That if they have, they have made the, the tragedy, the tragic mistake of sharing some of their oil, they would have failed to it. That is the message you hear coming through. How is it a rebuke to the church in Europe? The Lord is saying this. He is saying. He is so astonished. And he is very shocked at the church in Helsinki. 
He is so surprised about the church in Europe and in Finland. Because he said, this inclusiveness that you have incorporated in your salvation, who brought it to you? This inclusiveness that you are now incorporated into your salvation. Who told you that? From which gospel? The Lord is saying that the gospel of the cross is not that much inclusive. That everything you see in the world you bring, you bring into your life. The dress of the world you bring into the church. The movies of the world you work in the world. The immorality of the world you include it in your salvation. The Lord is asking the church in you. The church in Finland. So, this excessive inclusiveness I see you incorporate in your salvation. You, you got it, my son. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Thank you very much. This excessive inclusiveness I see all the time. Everything you get, you include it. Who taught it to you? Because he said the salvation of the cross after all is not that much inclusive. It is said by great Did you understand the rebuke? I told you this parable is deep, it's not simple. This parable is rebuking the present day church. And so you understand that the cloud of the glory of God when he comes to point the church to Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. He also comes to rebuke the apostasy of the church. And he says that apostasy creates two congregations. And he says that these other people without oil, he says, these ones don't get to enter. So he asks big questions. Do you have the oil? Can I move on? Can I move on? Allow me because there's so much I need to share with you. Can I move on? Again? How, how many agree I move on? Keep your hand up so I may know that I'm moving on with a democratic right. Now listen to me, precious people. They call it the democratic mandate. Listen to me, precious people. Now I want to focus on the most important part of this parable. The message to the church. That comes from, that comes from this visitation. Listen to this now. The most important message is the last verse. It is Matthew 25, verse 13. That is the most important. The most important is the last verse. Can you focus on me and I walk with you again? Hallelujah. Tomorrow there is a healing service. And I've seen some healing already. So it is so important for us to lay down this foundation of righteousness for the revival that is coming. Otherwise it will come and collapse. You see in Kenya now this is the 11th year. And look at the things that are happening. So it is only holiness. 
can sustain revival. The preaching of prosperity cannot sustain revival. They will turn it into shame. They will say, go, go touch it and claim it. They will do those kind of shameful things, right? That go, if you like that house, go touch it and claim it. No, because that is something else. That is absolute nonsense. When there is so much work to prepare the church. He said that Matthew chapter 25 verse 13. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know that day or the hour. And he says that is the most important message to take from that problem. Can I explain to you why it's the most important? Amen. Amen. So listen to this now. He says the parable describes the narrative of things that will happen at this time. And he comes to a place where he's saying, and therefore some will have no oil, some will have oil, and others will go, buy oil, give me some oil, and then. And he said, no, I can't give you oil. You, you go buy some for yourself. And coming back here, the door is shut. Lord, Lord, open for us. And the Lord said, no, I don't know you now. He shut the door. So he describes it fully. But when it comes to the end, you hear as if he's saying that because of these things that will happen, therefore, for you, you just keep watch. Did somebody understand? Let me repeat it. He said, because of these things, for you, you just keep watch and be ready because you don't know the name of the hour. Let me open it to you, Father. What is the Lord saying to the church? He says that he had already seen this day, this hour in the church. And he knew that all over the globe and especially Europe, there will be challenging times. Globally, globally, globally. I know I get the prophecy. You see, today they make another war began in Yemen. And all that. I get this prophecy. Everything happened globally. The prophecies are on the website, please. I want to focus on preparing the church. The prophecies are there, even the most recent prophecies are on the website. Another, another one, when he recently showed me again, he's coming to me. Again. They are on YouTube. They are on the website. But I want to focus this little time I have in this country to prepare the church. He said that he had already seen this day and the hour. And he says he had seen that it would be challenging time. Challenging because for anybody that will choose to walk in righteousness in these days, those days, these days, there will be laws that cannot allow you to walk in righteousness. Everything around you will be oppressing the righteous. It, it will be as if every system has turned around and is against the righteous. In Europe, if you try to be righteous,
Sometimes you get a threat animosity. Animosity. For I, I, I always give this example in Kenya. And I give it to Europe. Let's say they are looking for a saleswoman, sales. A woman that is going to sell their vehicles or their houses or their product, whatever it is. Saleswoman. Sales manager or a man or whatever. Maybe a manager of a bank. And we say, let's say it's a big bank or whatever bank it is. You, you know, modern Europe, modern. So we are looking for a manager, sales person. The front desk of the bank. You meaning you are the front image. And then, and, and then you, you go for that interview. And let's say you are dressed poorly, you are a righteous person. I know you work in a bank, so I'm not really talking about you. And you, you appear there. You have tied your hair. You are wearing a long jacket. The skirt is long. Wearing rubber shoes. And football socks. Red ones. Because they are comfortable. So, so you walk with it. You, you, you are just real to yourself. You are right just passing. And then you have an interview with other people. I can assure you. They will even ask, are you lost? Because that cannot be the image of today's bank or today's company, institution. They will need certain type of dressing, for example, to go in that type of job. There is a paradigm, there is a system that the enemy has set for the world. And if you say, no, 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 I just want to dress poorly, I don't care, I will go for interview. You'll find that the systems, you cannot fit in anymore. That is what the Lord was implying. That there are certain systems of heathenism that would come into place and, and they would trample over the heads of the righteous people. They would make it difficult to pursue holiness. And so, if you look at Matthew 25, verse 13, it's as, it's as though the Lord was telling the righteous few on the earth. You don't worry what you have gone through. You just know that you should be prepared for any time. For your deliverance is coming. To the righteous people in Europe, maybe your friends have rejected you, they don't call you anymore. Maybe because you are holy, you are up and through you out. What, whatever the circumstances, the Lord has set his glory to prepare the church. To tell the righteous few. Matthew 25, 13 says. The Lord worry. The Lord has appointed a day, one day like this. When he will deliver his people.
Oh, oh, thank you so much. Oh, oh. Let us go the Lord. So let me finish the So you see that precious people. That when the Lord Jesus himself talked about the midnight hour. There was a tremendous and profound message that he dispensed to the church. And so this should be a consolation to those who are pursuing righteousness in Europe. He said, no matter how difficult it is, your friends have rejected you. Because one thing I found out is that when you choose to walk in holiness, you attract animosity. You attract hostilities. Because Koska. your life becomes a testimony against the wicked, against, without, without preaching, without preaching. Your life right away becomes a testimony against those who are wicked. And sometimes, you know, you might fear that you're going to be lonely. I've talked to some, some people, some people have come to me and said, well, I'm in the UK and I know I want to walk holy, but I found that I'm losing my friends. I was also in the same place. Because they, you can imagine the kind of message they preach, you cannot have many friends. Especially from the establishment in the church. Because this becomes an affront to them. It becomes uh, an affront, it becomes a, a confrontation to them. And, and so, okay. people say, how will you do ministry? You are going to walk alone. Remember the newspapers used to call me the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger, who is walking alone. But what they did not understand is that I had the greatest company more than 7 billion people of mine. And when he appeared, then they understood whose company I was in. And so I'm inviting you to this tremendous company to walk with God. You remember? Enoch walked with God. And because Enoch walked with God, his pursuit for righteousness. The Bible describes him as one who was constantly seeking God. He walked with God, but the, more, the hungrier he became for God. Until he was normal. Until the Lord said, Enough is enough. I now take you to be with me because you love me so much so the Lord has come to walk with the church which is the righteous can now walk with you and that should be the antidote to neutralize the hostilities of this temporary world Hallelujah. It's a tremendous time in the church. I always say this is the Because you can literally prepare and enter. Can I move to the next 
Merci pour notre thème. So you have seen the double faced message that the Lord is talking about in this parable. Because he was talking about the final judgment. And he interrupted me. He said, the only thing that can interrupt you as light in that judgment is preparedness. Midnight hour. But when Jesus talked about the wise virgins, the virgins, what did he mean to the judge? I am also going to talk about when he talked about the banquet. What did he mean? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So can I look at the banquet first? Because it's the wedding feast, the wedding banquet. And I told you already that he bowed down the heavens. He brought heaven to their knees to come down to meet men. Because men could not understand the things of the kingdom. He had to come so low. This is what he meant by banquet. Look at this, focus on me. Because he said, while the others had gone to buy oil, then the bridegroom arrived. And the bridesmaids who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet. Went in with him into the wedding banquet. Some people call it the wedding feast. I call it the royal wedding banquet, the royal feast. What did he mean to the church? This is what the Lord meant. He presented an imagery, an imagery. And this is what was in the image. The image was a dress tent. You know the way in a wedding there is a special dress tent somewhere. Tent. Dress tent. Decorated. Decorated. Balloons, what, flowers, nice things have been put to decorate the place. Decorated tent, decorated place. Number one. The decoration has been put in the place. Flowers, what, there is a ceremony here. Number two, in that imagery. The tables have been dressed. And you almost think about white cloth, a very nice white. White cloth has been dressed on the tables. That's the imagery you get. Number three. He says, the meals have been served. Which means food has been put in arms. The silver things, you put food and cover, you put candles under. That is the imagery Jesus wanted you to get. The tent has been dressed. And the decorations have been put in place. It is well decorated. Deco. Pastor, I don't want to sleep here. Because you need to bring this down. So the tent has been decorated. And the table has been dressed. The tables have been well dressed with white cloth. Beautiful white glorious cloth. And then, Meals have been served. The glasses at that time you find they turn the glass upside down like this, like this, and the cold juice is there, the cold with ice, cold soda, Coca-Cola, everything has been put there. The food is already the table is served. Cold when you look at the frosty glass, it is frosty, it is a cold drink. 
And then they call it the napkins have been put the way they put them like a hat and stand the napkins, they stand it. And then and the glasses are like this, so you just will do this and they will be served. The food is in the hand and the fire is under the candles. The chairs have been dressed. The chairs are normally dressed and they tie a bow, a bow tie at the back of the chair. It's a cloth, beautiful, and at the back they tie for it like a bow tie. You, you know how chairs are decorated, right? Yes. And there is a, there is a, there is a, and there is a piece of uh, there is a piece of paper that has been done like this. And it says reserved. Yes, I know. Let me read this. Everything is set. But there is an empty chair. And there is a card on that table that is telling other people not to see it reserved. Did you understand? Are you ready? When he talked about banquet, the royal feast, the wedding feast of the land. This was the picture. That was the imagery he wanted the church to get. To realize that there is an empty chair. The table has been served. And it's written reserved. That chair needs to be filled. By somebody. Literally every Christian that ever received the law has a right if they want to enter the Gennet. Heaven is large. Uh, Even if 7 billion receive Christ and become holy, 7 billion will be accommodated in that feast. Heaven does not have the shortages that you see the earth have shortage, limited capacity. It's unlimited. What is your name? Aivo. Aivo. Reserved. And written Aivo. And your seat is empty. Did you understand the imagery of what Jesus wanted to bring to the church? So when he said, and the bridesmaids who were ready entered with him into the wedding banquet. The wedding banquet. with that empty chair at that table. So when the Lord spoke about the wedding banquet, it was a very profound message to the church in Europe and global. Because he was saying that the day that the bridesmaids, the, oh, listen, listen, the day that the, the wise, the wise virgins, the wise bright maids will enter with him into heaven. Is the day when for the first time the fruit of the cross will be seated. That seat, will, what, what they do is this. When they are walking with you. But you how many? 
A party of five. Please come with me. Oh, you are the you are, you are, you are, you, you are, you are the Peter. Oh, the Peter. Okay, come, please, come. Don't pass your last time. And then, when you take your seat, then you see, take that away. Is it the half thousand points that I will make this to myself? No, it's not that much. Say, oh, and I got a twenty-five dollar bill. Thank you for coming. I bless you, Father. Thank you. Well, this time, the way you see, listen this time. So, when finally the wise church, which is God fear, wisdom is the fear of God. When finally the wise church will be seated in that empty seat. This is what the Lord meant. Then, for the first time, the kingdom of God will be complete. And that's why you see from that point on, he said, all the seats are occupied, shut the door now, shut the door. Now, now, now shut the door. Lord, Lord, Herra, Herra, please open for us also. To tell you, the, the, is there any, no, I think we are only, uh, to tell you the truth, I don't know you. Did you understand the message Jesus wanted to bring to the church? He wanted to bring the church the fact that you have a reserved seat. And the day you sit there, then you complete the kingdom of God. Now that table is complete. Now the banquet can go on. Everybody is in attendance. Hallelujah. Everybody is now in attendance. Now the king, in fact, he meant the fruition. The kingdom of God will have come to fruition, to the fruit. Will have more fruit. So when Jesus spoke about the parable of the midnight hour, and now the Father comes to be able to prepare the church for the midnight hour. It was such a profound conversation with the church. It was a very deep conversation. Because he spoke about the wedding banquet, which represents the kingdom of God. Which, which means, uh, which represents the kingdom of God. And you know that when we go to wedding banquets, we normally feast, we eat very well. In fact, in fact, we normally go hungry. You are normally told, come with an empty stomach and a smile on your face. So you don't want to start eating another meal somewhere and you're going to already back it. No, normally people are hungry. When the Lord talked about the wedding banquet, He implied that just as people go to wedding feasts to, 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 to eat, to eat their fill, to, to feast, feast is the word. He was saying, so will it be in the kingdom of God. That those souls that were God hungry on the earth, finally they will feast eternal. Hallelujah. We will now be with God face to face. He said that hunger will be feasted to satisfaction. Because at that banquet will be seated the Lord. And then, once 
all the chairs have been occupied. Kun kaikki uh, nämä penkit ovat uh, varat, uh, istutet, uh, kaikki istuvat penkeissä ja ne ovat kaikki täytetyt. The door will be commanded closed. Niin ovi uh, käsitään sulkeutumaan. I already began by describing to you the people who will be locked out, rolling on the soil, gnashing of teeth. Minä kuvaan jo tuossa aluksi niitä ihmisiä, jotka tulevat jäämään sinne ulkopuolelle. He kiristelevät hampaita ja uh, kieriskelevät siellä maassa. I describe to you the people that will miss the feast. Minä kuvaan teille niitä ihmisiä, jotka tulevat menettämään tämän hääjuhlan. The ones that the door will close out. It will be unbearable. Niitä ihmisiä, jotka tämä ovi on sulkenut ulkopuolelle. I have seen the vision of the earth after the rapture. The first thing I asked the Lord when I woke up. I asked the Lord, why was it so dark? It will be very dark. Because the wise virgins who are the beholders of the burning lamp. You are the light of the world. You are the holy habitation of the Holy Spirit, the oil. And burning the lamp. And the day that church is taken away, the holy church, darkness will hit the earth. I asked him, Lord, why was it so dark? So the one who is speaking with him has seen him at the other dispensation. Watchman, what do you see? I see the glory, I see the morning coming, the midnight, the morning glory, the morning coming. But after that, I see you again coming to ask me, watchman, what do you see? Meaning I see another darkness come now. He said, the morning is coming. When the church will be taken. But after that time, and so this was a very profound conversation the Lord had with the church. Can I now share on why he used the virgins, the symbolism? That is what he has come to reveal that you may enter. And he has sent you the cheapest slave you can ever involve. Just an email and I'm Because I'm told some people need money down, right? You have to fuel some private aircraft, right? Yeah. Good fuel, $50,000. Just write an email to Hong Kong. Thank you very much, thank you very much for doing this. Hallelujah. Yes, because it's time to champion and center the kingdom of God. So, why did the Lord use the, the connotation, virgin, wise virgins? I am literally teaching or what, right? Which is the right? Hallelujah. Because of what's at stake if we don't do this. The church is too modern. She has to be retaught. Back to basics. Now, when the Lord spoke about virgins, He wanted to portray the character of the church that would enter heaven. He was implying that the church that will enter the glorious kingdom of heaven he was referring to her purity 
Again, you will refine the purity of that jet purity. Hän uh, puhui siitä puhtaudesta. Undefined. Joka on, joka ei ole saastunutta. Untouched. Eh, eli hän ei ole koskettu. Then, number two. Numero kaksi. He was referring to the holiness of that church. Hän viittasi tota seurakunnan pyhyyteen. Undefined. Joka ei ole uh, saastu, saastunutta. Untouched. Uh, you, were, you was referring to the righteousness of that church. Number four, those who are right. Thank you. Number four, this is what he says. Look, if you read Amplified, Amplified says, while they are gone away to buy the oil, when they were pois ostamaan öljyä, then the Messiah came. That's the Amplified. Send that the right okay. Uh, tämä on mitä Amplified sanoo, että nyt uh, suuhanen tuli. This one says, Mutta tämä tässä sanoo, but while they were all their way, meaning they had left. Eli kun he olivat matkalla, tarkoittaa, että he olivat lähteneet. I'm trying to, 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 to underscore point number four. Minä Those who are writing this. Minä yritän uh, puhua teidän numerosta neljä, teille, jotka kirjoitatte. This is what he said. Tämä on se, mitä hän sanoo. He said, hän sanoo, that the kingdom of heaven että Jumalan valtakunta is like ten virgins who went out on kuin kymmenen neitsyön valta, jotka lähtivät ulos to wait for the bridegroom odottamaan surhasta and receive him. Ja vastaanottaen hänet. Meaning they moved location, they came from one place and they went out for another place to receive him. Tarkoittaa, että lähtivät yhdestä paikasta toiseen paikkaan vastaanottamaan häntä. So he talks about them moving from one location to another location. Joten hän puhuu siitä, että he lähtivät yhdestä paikasta toiseen paikkaan. But the next thing he says is that while they were at that place of reception to receive, there was a place where they were taken to that's the place now of reception, to receive the bread. He says, then the, 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 the foolish virgins left that place. They left. While they were on their way, they had left. While they had gone away to buy oil, Silloin, kun he olivat lähteneet pois ostamaan sitä öljyä, they had left the place of reception. he olivat lähteneet siitä uh, vastaanoton paikasta. Okay, babies, cross very fast. Cross very fast, I may give the message, babies. Thank you very much for crossing. Thank you. Because we are live on TV. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. Now everybody can focus on me. He said, they came out and went to a particular place of receiving, of reception. Then, after a certain time, the foolish virgins without oil went away from that place of reception to buy oil. And that leaves only the wise virgins at the place of reception. And then at that place, all of a sudden, the bridegroom arrives. And they received him and went to him. So the fourth reason why he used virgins is because on se, koska he wanted to emphasize on the receptiveness of the church to Jesus. Receptiveness. Because the others went away. But later you understand that what makes the wise virgins receptive is nothing else other than the jar of oil. It is the jar of oil that defines their receptiveness. So their receptiveness was not a new, my son, just sit there if you can. Sit, sit down, sit down, sit down there. Don't move. Thank you very much. Because of time. So listen to this now. Be, be, because, be, because look, the receptiveness was owing to the jar of oil that 
he brings. Vastaanottavaisuus liittyy tähän öljyasiaan, jonka hän tuo. Listen, listen. Kuuntele hän tätä nyt. That jar of oil that the wise virgins were having was not a late phenomenon, what was not a later phenomenon. They came with it from there. Ja nämä viisaat metsijöit tulivat tuon öljyasian kanssa. Ei se ollut mikään tämmöinen jälkimmäinen hiljelijä, vaan perintä oli jo sen mukana. And they lived their lives holding it like this until it was needed. Ja he elivät koko elämänsä pitää pitäneensä öljyasia kädessään niin kauan kuin se tarvittiin. Meaning they had receptiveness unto the Lord was already from the beginning when they received Jesus. Eli he eivät vastaanottavaisuus Herran puolelle alku jo siitä päivästä, kun he vastaanottivat Jeesuksen elämänsä. So, the use of the terminology was meant to portray the receptiveness of the church that would enter heaven, receptive to Jesus. I want to share something very, very important with the wise virgins. And this is regarding the personal, you know, you want to know what was the personal life of, the, of that wise church in the parable, because that church is right now on the earth. Right now she's on the earth. Again, let me repeat this. When you read the parable, you want to know how did that church live her life in that parable. And because that prophecy is not yet fulfilled, it is just about to be fulfilled if you ask me. That means that church is on the earth right now. And so you want to know how did she live her life that I may be that church. Because we have seen from verse 13 that the entire parable is actually meant to want the church not to miss heaven. The entire parable, like I raised, I elevated verse 13, was actually meant to warn the church, please don't miss the heaven. Se tarkoitettiin varoittamaan seurakuntaa, että please, pyydän, älkää menettäkö, ohittako he seurakuntaa, tai ilman valtakuntaa. Now listen, precious people. Kuunnelkaa kansalaiset ihmiset. You will find the following. Löydät seuraavan. About the wise virgins. Viisaista neitsyistä. And I know translation, you've done a very good work, my daughter, we're live here. But now, now, thank you so much for coming. Now I'm going into some terminologies and the Lord will help you, right? Thank you. So, if you look at the description of the different versions of the Bible about the wise virgins, one of them says they were prudent. Very good. Amplified even says they were attentive. So those are some of, if you wanted to know what life they had, those are some of the features you pick up, right? Other versions say they had foresight, forethought, forethought. Meaning they think forward. Jotkut versiot sanovat, että heillä on tämmöinen ennakkokäsitys. Other versions say they were wise, others say they were clever. Jotkut versiot sanovat, että he olivat viisaita. Jotkut versiot sanovat, että he olivat älykkäitä. But there are three terminologies I want to use on the word wise. When I just go to the dictionary to look for the word wise, I pick some three nice terminologies. Ja kun menen raamattuun, niin haluan valita sieltä kolme erilaista tällaista terminologiaa. One of them is called, I don't know whether you have a word in Finnish for this, called shrewd. Elikkä? Shrewd. You have a word for shrewd? I like my daughter that she's shaking the head. No, that one we don't have. <laughs> Thank you very much for shaking your head on that. Are we going to look in the Finnish uh, web dictionary? Thank you so much. If you see when Jesus is sending them, he's asking them to be as shrewd as this, or as cunning as this, but as innocent as girls. 
Hän sanoi, että onko tämmöisiä teräviä, teräaloisia nokkeloita, nokkelia, mutta viettomia kuin kyyhkyset. So let me just read so that we don't run into a lot of uh, issues, right? Eli luenpa nyt, että me että pääsemme helpommalla tässä. Hallelujah. Let me just read some of the things about kind and shrewd. Hallelujah. Amen. So here we go now. For, for me, from just dictionary, which you can get also in the Finnish dictionary, shrewd. Just say that she has told you. Okay. Very good. Okay, there you go now. And those terminologies are used in the Bible. So, but these are some of the properties of the wise virgins who are managed to help people navigate their lives until they enter. And I'll just read if there is no word in Finnish, it is okay. But whatever there has a word, you can say. Because I was interested in knowing what were the qualities of this, this because I know that church is here now. So I wanted to help the church of Christ. I wanted to go deep and tell them, no, 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 be like that. So I went a little deeper to understand these things, right? This is the message that the church in Kenya feeds on. No wonder the revival is immense. Hallelujah. Under shrewd. Having or showing sharp powers of judgment. Having and showing sharp powers of judgment. Don't worry, judgment, judgment. Meaning you can judge very well. Don't worry. Having and showing sharp powers of judgment. You can judge very sharp without error. The word astute. Okay, astute. Let me read for you astute. He, astute says bright, smart. In, intuitive. Very good. Insightful. They look inside. Insightful. They look deeper inside. He said incisive. Incisive, which means very uh, cutting. You know, they, they really get to the point. He is asking incisive questions, like very deep to the core. You see that? And then the other property is intelligent. Sagacious. Sagacious. The sages are the prophets. If you are sagacious, meaning you are forethought, you are always thinking ahead. You are trying to think ahead. Clever. Having the ability to understand things. And to make good judgment. Mental sharpness. Matthew chapter 10, 16. And in Matthew 10, 16 he says. Hallelujah. 10, 16 he says. I am sending you, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Okay. Another quality of shrewdness is having a clever awareness. Especially on practical matters. I'm looking at cunning. Cunning says skill. It is a skill. Yes, very good. It is a skill that is employed by the shrewd. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh yes, welcome to the kingdom of God. It is a cunning. Cunning is a skill that the shrewd people employ. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is adept performance, which means showing high proficiency of performance. I don't know how to put that in Spanish. Showing high proficiency of performance. Don't worry about it. Sharp in performance. Thank you so much. They say performing with ingenuity. 
Genius life. But for me, like a genius. Expert. Another quality is attentive according to our divine. It says, pay close attention to something. It says observant. Heedful. We means you can listen. Heedful. Someone who listens very well. Yeah. All those talk about this church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, precious people, can I move on now? What shock is the following? When I looked at the qualities that he is announcing the church, you know, he said, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. I said, He has come, he has come to focus the church. And when I listen to Jesus talk about the midnight hour, this is what I get. This is what I listen to. I hear Jesus describing the church that will enter. And in this description of the church that enters, you have all that description, prudent, thoughtful, wise, clever, intelligent, everything, shrewd, cunning, everything is in there. When I looked and put all together, I put all that together. What I did, I put it together, those qualities of the wise church that enters heaven. This is what I discovered. I found out something very, this is a revelation in fact. Because I found out that all this quality being described here, they are actually personal qualities, personal. They cannot be shared. No wonder they would not share with the foolish virgins. Because these qualities define one thing. They define the fear of God in one's heart. They define the humbleness of someone's heart. And those are things you cannot share. They define the zeal for God in your heart. I say they define the fear of God, number one, the fear of God in your heart. Number two, the humbleness of your heart. The third one, the contriteness of your heart. How contrite is your heart? The zeal for God in your heart. The hunger for God in your heart. I found out that these were not group qualities. They are not group. That when the wife, that is where the mistake is in the church in Europe right now. Because the church in Europe thinks that we will enter as one church. I will enter as a group. I am in a Bible study group. In our group we will enter. In our church we will enter. With my family we will enter. He says no, no, no. Because these qualities of the wise virgins 
were parcel of qualities, parcel of individual. How can you share the fear of God in your heart? You can preach it to somebody, but you cannot enforce it in their hearts. So I found out that these qualities are virgins that will enter the kingdom of God. They are separated from group, group uh, psychology, group, uh, group action, group solidarity. You have to pursue them alone in your heart. And that tells you that the wise virgins, where they were together, on an individual basis, each one of them was doing tremendous work in their hearts. And that becomes another rebuke to the church in Finland, the church in Europe. Why? Why do you become so inclusive like this? You want to go to heaven with your neighbor, you want to go to heaven with your husband, you want to go to heaven with your wife, you want to go to heaven with your the, the church members.